in the heart, soul, brains, and fashion plate on TV's number one drama, NCIS. Yep. Paris wouldn't be nearly as interesting without the lovable Abby Shuto. Please welcome the fabulous Polly Perrette. Of course, you're dressed in black. Wow, hello. Like, ran up there, I'm like, hi, I'm here to 
you're like, thanks. I think that was the first thing I ever said to you 100 years ago. But no, I, I couldn't do that either, because it's just too, like, I don't know, I, I, when I'm not doing other stuff, I'm, I'm pretty much a very reclusive. I really like to be alone. Like, I, and I, you can never be alone, so that would be like... No, oh, no, that's true. That, that to me, is more of a challenge mentally. I absolutely. And that will drive you insane. Whereas, Survivor, you can go off to a little bush and be by yourself. I mean, yeah. Valuables rather than risk losing them to the television. <laughs> NCIS, and we're back with Polly Perez. Congratulations, NCIS was picked up for its 11th season. Damn. NCIS featured, uh, they're featuring an episode with Abby as a little girl. Yeah, that, that happened. And, and they had, like, trouble finding pictures of, of her. Well, no, they were, like, one time, they were going to cast her, and I said, well, good luck. My, my eyes were green and yellow. I was like, good luck with that, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yellow, they both have green and yellow in them. And, and, and someone said that I... Damn, how can you have yellow, yellow eyes? Yellow. But the girl that they cast, with Brian Charbonneau, no, she's an outstanding actress. She's going to, like, win all the awards someday. But, like, she looks exactly like me. And yeah. she studied me. Only like, cats have yellow eyes. All the, I don't know, I guess I do a lot of weird stuff, but she did it. She's the one mirroring you back and being like, oh, oh my God, I do do that. I, she's like, she was incredible. I fell so in love with her. But tonight's episode, uh, Michael Weatherly directed. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so, and, and he is, if, I mean, just so everybody knows, as handsome as he is, he's also that awesome. He's one of my favorite people in the world. He's our big brother, but he directed our, that episode, and, and there has dogs in it. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, I need to just be, like, totally honest with you. Last time you were here, your car was totally filthy. So what's the deal with that? What's the story about that? <laughs> my car is, I've never washed my car. Whatever. Okay. What? Well, here's it, and it's like, it's like an older car. But, well, there's a couple things. Um, well, no, that's not true. I did one time we were on location at NCIS, <laughs> and I it got a dust storm, and you couldn't see out of the window, so I always sit down. But I did. What is the reason? Well, there's, a, there's a couple of things. First of all, like, you know we're always having water shortages and stuff? And they're always like, don't water the grass, don't water the trees. And I'm always like, well, they kind of need that, but we don't need to be washing our cars all the time. So I've always wondered, it'll never go over in LA. Why didn't they, when we have a water shortage, why don't they say, nobody can wash our cars this week? Because people would freak out. Yeah. And like, and it's true. It's true. So that's part of it. So I just, for me, I'm not a car person. It's unnecessary to wash my car. And my car doesn't care. It's fine. And then also, <laughs> I, also, I, also, I also think, like, like, I don't have a nice car at all, but I also think, like, my car always looks, like, really crappy, then nobody's going to steal it. <laughs> my car because well, there's also like tons of stuff yeah there's tons of stuff like so that's the other thing is your car looks a little bit like uh like a hobo isn't it because <laughs> you keep it all full of there is a very good back reason. Seat full of socks <laughs> so the back seat is full of socks okay. damn i know it's good so i have this i work with the homeless a lot i work with so many homeless advocacies um all or all different kinds but one of the things that is true across the board what one of the most necessary and easy things for uh, the homeless is clean, dry socks. It's a huge thing. I mean, even at my church, we handle stuff. That's the number one thing. We always have to do it. It's also, you know, sustenance and housing, which are bigger things, but what's so simple is I always get like hundreds of pairs of socks, keep them in my thing. And when anybody comes up to you at an intersection or if you're walking somewhere, there's somebody there, hand them some socks. They, they, it, not only is it so fun, but just try it. I'm just telling you, just try it one time. The look on their face is also like being understood. And I also say, ask them in their name. No one ever asks the homeless people what yeah, their names are. Right. Right. It's so fun. I've had on Twitter, um, I always I tweet about socks a lot, and I've had these awesome people like taking pictures of them, like just having socks in their car, and then they, they write back and they're like, wow, that was amazing. Like just yeah. getting somebody a sock. And my fiance is a military veteran, and he said that when they were at war and out in the field, that was their. Oh. <laughs> That was their thing too. It's for yeah. soldiers. So also, if you want to get in the sock thing and send some soldiers some socks, I don't know if that's necessary. Okay. Well, yeah. your backseat is going to get a little bit messy and a little bit more crowded because we want to do our part, and we're giving you a hundred pairs of socks. Oh my God.
Thank <laughs> you.